All right, welcome middle school parents and students. It's good to be together again uh, for this middle school family devotional. I uh, hope you're enjoying this series as we'll get to do it for the next few weeks together. And again, just a reminder, this is kind of taking place of what we've been doing on Sunday mornings with how to study the Bible. Uh, but what's I think really cool is parents are getting to hopefully do it together with their students uh, at some point, either on a Sunday or at some point throughout the week. So uh, from here on out, the video is going to look a little different. What you're seeing here is my iPad screen. And if you remember last week, I had two different video cameras set up and one was shooting me and then the other one was from above kind of showing you what I was going to be working and writing. But I came across an idea utilizing a really cool uh, app and some technology that uh, actually streamlines and makes everything really simple. So from here on out, that's kind of what you're going to see. So what we're going to use is this app down here on the bottom row, second column in, called Bible Markup. Okay, This is a free app you can get in the App Store, and it works on your iPhone and iPads. I'm not sure if it works on... Uh, Macs or MacBooks. So when you get it uh, downloaded, you can pull it up. And what you can do here at the top is search scripture. You could put in any passage of scripture and it'll pull it up with any type of version English Standard Version, uh, Christian Standard Version, New American Standard, NLT, NIV, whatever, whatever you'd like, you can pull it up there. Or you can do the Paste Content feature, which I use occasionally depending on which passage of scripture we're using. So today I'm going to show you how I do that. I usually just go to Google, which I've already got that pulled up right here. Here's our passage, Colossians 2, verses 1 through 5. That's the one we're going to be looking at. And what I do is I select it all, and I copy it. And I go back, pull up the app, get on here to paste content, paste, and there it is. So, this is what we have to work with. This is the main screen. Uh, you've got a drop-down menu here. Uh, arrow going all four ways allows you to move your text around. You can place it wherever you'd like. And we're going to do that right there. The pencil is your editing feature. Uh, when you select it, you can select all these different colors. There's an eraser, so on and so on. And then this uh, arrow with the pencil here is basically uh, go back or erase. So let's begin. We're going to use soap again this week. So if you've got a Bible or a journal or a piece of paper, great. Hopefully you've got a pen. You're going to jot a few things down. Um, if you need to, go ahead and take a second. Uh, you can hit pause here and you can write this passage out on your piece of paper or in your journal whatever you're using, go ahead and write the passage out. And then when you're done, hit play and we'll continue together. All right, so if you've got that in your journal or on your piece of paper, let's go to the next step, which is O. We're gonna get some observations. Um, as you can see here on the screen, uh, you've probably read it as you wrote it. So let's read it really quick. For I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea, and for all who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments, for though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ. So as we move on to observations, uh, I'm going to do it uh, a little differently this week. It's something I've, I've gone over with the students on Sunday mornings, and you'll see that in just a second. But you may remember the way that I like to start, even when I'm studying a passage of Scripture that I have to preach or teach, I like to read it in this format, whether I write it out or I use this app. And then I go through and take note of certain words. So I've already circled or underlined struggle for a specific reason. But let's, let's note a couple things. So this is what jumps off or catches my attention. 
for how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea. So there's, he's thinking about and he's addressing a, a group of people. Those of you at Colossae, those of you at Laodicea, and then all who have not yet seen me face to face. So that could be people in Laodicea or it could be Colossae or just Christians in general. Paul's talking about um, them specifically and why he's writing. And then verse 2 shows us that why, that their hearts may be encouraged. So there's kind of a verb action, knit together in love to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery which is Christ. I love verse 2, and I'm going to come back and note something here. But look at verse 3. In whom are hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge. What I love about that, when we think about this word treasures, we normally think of what? Money, uh, gold, stuff that has a really high value. Some of you may even think about treasure chest or pirates or whatever. But in this case, Paul is saying the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. He's equating wisdom and knowledge to something of high value. And if you think about it, we humans, we lack this, do we not? Parents, you can agree. Students, you may or may not agree. Uh, as you get older in life and as you mature, you grow in wisdom and knowledge. And as you mature as a Christian, your goal is to grow in spiritual wisdom and spiritual knowledge. All right. And Paul says, he says all this in order that no one would delude you with plausible arguments. So I don't want you to lose sight of what he means. What he's essentially saying is false teachings. He doesn't want them to be persuaded by that. And his last part, for though I am absent in body, I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and that you're standing firm in your faith in Christ. All right. So as uh, we move to or we are now in our observation, um, I kind of want to note three things, I think. So let's go ahead and do that. My quick observations from just reading this, and then we're going to talk more about word in just a moment. Okay. My quick observations. As I read this, I kind of sense a tone of pastoral care. And Paul was very much a pastoral figure as he was going around on missionary journeys, starting these churches and areas. And you can see throughout his letters in the New Testament of how he cares for Christians in these cities, whether he was calling them out or encouraging um, them and uplifting them. So um, let's do our observations this way for this week. Let's do simply a who, a why, and a what. I do that occasionally just to see simple things in the text. So who, uh, we, well, we know Paul's writing it. Who is he talking about? Who is he addressing? Well, he's addressing Christians at Colossae. And Laodicea. And those he hasn't met yet. Okay, we saw that in verses 1 and 2. All right, then let's think about the why. Why is Paul writing? What is he addressing here? What is motivate him, motivating him to say the words that we're reading here in verses 1 through 5? So what's the why? Well, if you look at verse 4, the answer is that Christians may not be deceived 
by false truths. Simply, you saw that in verse 4, right? What's the what? That's kind of the third question. What is Paul doing? Well, just thinking logically about what we've read in verses 1 through 5, we see that Paul is working. Whoop. Did I just get rid of everything? Nope, oh, there it is. Sorry. Paul is working. Well, and we'll say ministering. Okay. To see others grow in Christ. Now there's another word that came to my mind as I read this. And I want to note it because what I think Paul's talking about, especially when we think about wisdom and knowledge being hidden in Christ, Christ being God's mystery. Love, love those two words. Paul, this is not the first time Paul uses it, by the way. Um, he connects the word mystery to God's son, Jesus. Indeed, uh, his life, his purpose, I mean, we fully, un we, un we understand it to some extent, but when you think about how scandalous that grace is and how mysterious it is and everything that Jesus is, and we still fully don't grasp it. Um, but what Paul's wanting to do here is see these Christians grow in maturity. And that's where I get this word by just thinking about what's going on here in verses 1 through 5, looking at mystery, in which is Christ, and in him are hidden the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And keep in mind, my mind is not your mind. My observations and applications may not be yours. But you're welcome to use mine. You're welcome to jot mine down. Hopefully you've written it down already. And um, what I want to do as we move on to the next step in application is I'm going to think about my own personal application and jot it down. But I want you to hit pause now and write down some applications from maybe what you've seen that I've wrote or what you've written down as your own observation. So hit pause here, and when you're ready, let's start again. All right. Uh, I'm assuming now you're ready to go. As you hopefully have paused and written down some application, we're going to move on to that next step now. So I've cleared my slate here, and I'm going to write down a few points of application. One thing I didn't mention earlier, and you may see here at the top, I've written Paul's ministry to the church. So what you can do when you're reading your Bible, sometimes when there's a new chapter or a new paragraph, there is a title or a, a heading for that section. And what's great to note and see that is when you see those titles and their, or those headers, it gives you an idea of what you're about to read. So in the ESV Bible, uh, the section, the paragraph before chapter 2, they have Paul's ministry to the church, and that very much fits in with what we're reading here. Um, Paul is ministering in this letter to Christians in Colossae, and we see that he's again mentioned those at Laodicea and all who haven't seen me face to face. So he's ministering to the church. Um, so let's think about some application from our observations. Remember, you can have just as many applications as you do observations. You don't always have to. For this video, I'm going to do two applications. Okay. Now, remember, again, I'm thinking pastorally. Me being a pastor, I'm approaching this text pastorally. And I want you to see that. That's what I've communicated to you. But what you need to do and what's important for you to do as a Christian, a church family member or part of a church congregation, how does that, how does this passage apply to you? So think about that. I'm going to write mine down and we're going to talk through yours and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. So, what I pull from my own observations, thinking pastorally, this passage encourages me 
to teach the whole council, sorry if this is a little sloppy, of God. So, well, let's just do a line. In order, so teach the whole counsel of God in order that Christians would know him fully. Parents, this is my passion. This is my goal in life especially being a student pastor, is to teach the whole counsel of God. Um, I'm striving to do my best so that people, students for that matter, understand who God is and that they would know him fully. Okay, so that's my first point of application. My second one is thinking about this those at Laodicea who I have, he says, who have not seen me face to face. So the thing that comes to mind for me is minister to those I know so that they can minister to those I don't know. Make sense? Hopefully. And this is where we'll talk a little bit about your application. So, as we've read and hopefully understood this or seen it a little differently, um, the word I underlined at the beginning of our time was struggle. I underline that because I find that word interesting, and Paul saying he's struggling through something. Well, I dug a little deeper, as anyone can, to, to try and find out what this word means. What is, what is Paul communicating when he writes that? And what I found was the Greek word he uses is actually striving. And he used... The same word back in chapter 1, verse 29, that he was striving towards something. So we can almost read it this way, for I want you to know how great I am striving for you and for those at Laodicea and those who have not met me, so that your, you know, we read that literally, he's saying there, he's talking about those, these people. Okay, But in a very real way, you, reading this in the year 2020, can say you or your, so that your hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach the riches of full assurance and understanding. I was listening to my devotional today, and oddly enough, it was on Paul, and the premise devotional was that Paul was saved. Remember who Paul was before he was Paul. He was Saul and he was a persecutor and trying to kill Christians. God saved Paul so that you would be saved, would be a Christian today. Isn't that an amazing thought? Like, think about it. We have a written copy of the, uh, of the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. And quite literally in verse 2, if we put ourselves in that. Because look who's writing. Paul. And he's writing these words. Like Paul had, I don't know if Paul, I think he did to, to some extent, but I don't know if Paul fully understood just how great God was going to use his life and his writings for the church for thousands of years. I mean, that's an awesome thought, is it not? You and I are Christians. We've heard the gospel and we've believed it because Paul strived. He ministered and he cared for people he would never know. 
so that they would know Jesus. Amen. So whatever your application is, as we get down to the last part, the prayer, the way we respond. I know how I want to close this video, but I want you to think about how you're going to respond and how you're going to turn these thoughts into prayers. I think the simple application for you guys is to think about how you would minister to your family members, students. You very much, you very well can minister to your family members. You can minister to your friends who don't go to church. But what if we started thinking on a global scale and then on a future scale? So what I mean is you start thinking about how you're living your life, how you can live your life boldly for God, share the gospel, and then think about all the other people that may come to know Jesus because of your ministry of your faithfulness, I mean, think about it that way, of your faithfulness to be obedient to God's commands. So what I want to do to close is to pray, since God has blessed me and gave me the privilege to be your pastor, I want to pray kind of pastorally over this text and over you. And uh, thank you for watching and tuning in. I'm really excited about uh, what technology has afforded us to do and that we get to look at the scriptures in this way. And I hope you'll continue to join us in the weeks ahead. So let me pray and we'll be finished. Father, thank you so much for Paul's words. More importantly, thank you for Paul's life. How awesome it is to think about Paul doing day-to-day -day work, being a minister of the gospel, so many years ago, but how his life and his work has a direct effect on us today, even as we read his words in the New Testament. God, we know that his words were your words, and you gave them to him, especially when we think about everything that we get in Jesus Christ. So, Father, help us to grow in wisdom and knowledge. Help us to understand that, indeed, what you offer to us in Jesus is more valuable to be treasured counts way more than anything else we'll experience on earth so father help us to find joy and purpose and meaning and pleasure in him all the days of our lives even during tough days like these help us to be faithful to you help us to learn how to share the gospel effectively thank you for your word lord and thank you for your son jesus it's in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me this week. Hope you all have a great week. We'll see you next time.